I'm Steve from This Week With Cars and today I have some work that I need to do on the Triumph TR7. So let's get started. Let's get the bonnet open. Here you can see the infamous Triumph TR7 four cylinder engine. This was not the best engine that was ever designed. One of the biggest problems with this engine is that the head bolts go in different directions and they go through an aluminum head. So if they were to seize in there, there's almost no way to get that removed from the engine. At least not without a lot of work and possibly destroying things. But today I have a much simpler task to deal with. Let's start the engine up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Did you see how much the engine was shaking there? I think that the mounts have either gone bad, collapsed, or broken. This is on the left side of the car. You can see the mount down there. It looks like it might be a little bit squashed. And here on the right side of the car, it looks like the mount might be a little bit twisted. And there is also a transmission mount underneath the car. And that's where I'm gonna start first. Right here is the transmission mount. These have a tendency to go bad on the Triumph TR7. If I push up on the drive shaft, you can see how much the transmission moves up and down. It looks like the transmission mount has actually become separated here. What I'm planning on doing is installing this mount. This is actually an engine mount for a Triumph TR8 uh, because the TR7 mount goes bad so easily. Uh, it, this would be an upgrade to use the stronger mount for the TR8 in its place. Let's get it out of the bag and see how it looks. So here it is out of the bag. Let's get this old one removed. You can kind of see it, but there's a couple pins right there and that fits up into the little holes right there. Try to keep that centered within the mount there. These bolts right here are not captured, so you will have to hold on to the top side with a wrench. Now I need to lift the transmission up and off of that mount, so I'm going to use a jack to do that. This rubber is just a gooey mess and not good at all anymore. Now that I have the transmission supported, I just need to take out the four bolts that hold the cross member in and then I can get this old mount out and put the new one in. Okay, here you can see the difference between the old mount and the new one. This one is pretty gross. The rubber has just turned to jelly. This is just completely useless. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Just reverse the process to put it back together. A bunch of the old motor mounts still stuck up in there. I should be able to bolt this back in right now. I'm gonna use a pry bar to get the transmission moved over into the right spot. Gonna shake the drive shaft again. We'll see what happens this time. Almost no movement there. And I'm really putting a lot of force into it. So that's not too hard of a job to do. Definitely a huge upgrade. And if you have a TR7 running around with its original mounts, maybe you should think about changing them. Okay, here we are on the left side of the car. This is kind of underneath the left side of the engine. You can see this motor mount here is compressed a bit. And it's actually kind of soft. Here's the new motor mount. This is very hard rubber. I can't even push into this. So I'm going to need to replace this one as well. So as you can see from the brackets, it has two holes in it, which are, go right here. And then it has a bolt which connects to the engine. 
So there'll be a nut up in this cavity, up in that cavity right there that I'll have to undo. So I'll get these undone first and then hopefully undo that nut and the motor mount should fall off. I've got my jack under the front of the engine and I'm going to crank it up, try to relieve some of this weight. It'll make it easier to get that mount undone. Removing this is gonna be a tedious process, a couple flats at a time. Now this one removed, I'm gonna do the one on the other side and I'll come right back to you. Okay, I have both the bolts out. I'm gonna try to raise the engine up, see if it moves up enough that I could get a new mount in there. Feels like that's as far as it wants to go. Hopefully this is enough room and when I remove the bolt up there that this mount will come out of there. Okay, I have the nut on the top loose, but it is still barely held in there. So I'm gonna try to lift the engine up just a little bit more. Okay, there's the old mount. You can really see how squashed down the old mount right here is compared to the new one. This might make this a lot more difficult to put it back in, but definitely should make a big difference on this car. I think I'm gonna lower the engine a little bit so that I can get these bolts right here lined up first. Like I'll put one in right now. Okay, that's in there loosely to help guide everything into place. Now I'll just lower the engine a little. Now I'll move to the other side, see if I can get that other bolt started. And then everything should be lined up. I might have to use my uh, pry bar to move the engine around a little bit to get everything lined up. I have both of these bolts back in and tight now. I just need to put the nut up there. I'll put the washer on first. And that was, of course, a lock nut. So that means I'm gonna have to spin it the whole way on with a wrench. Everything's tight, I'll lower the engine down now. This motor mount's not bulging, it's not soft. Should work a whole lot better than the one that was on there. This last motor mount looks pretty easy. It's the same style as the one I just replaced. You have a nut over here, two bolts over here. Again, this one will probably have to be done from below the car because you cannot access this nut from up above, at least not easily. Although these two bolts you could easily get to from above. I do have a jack underneath the engine supporting the weight so that this motor mount can come out. Okay, this one was sitting in a little metal container. So just pull that out, put the new one in, and it's ready to go back in. Now I'll just lower the engine down and I'll tighten up this nut here. I want to do one last quick job for tonight and that is install this simple battery cutoff switch. This car has a modern radio in it which means that it's powered all the time to keep the memory and the clock and all that. But that can drain your battery completely when you're storing the car for the winter. So I'm going to just add this little cutoff switch. This is the style that I like because you just have to unscrew it a little way and that disconnects the power from the battery. So you don't actually have to spend much time uh, disconnecting and connecting it. And this will also adapt to a normal battery and you can use your normal battery cables with it as well. So that's what I like about these. And it only takes a second to throw it on. Now when the car is put away for storage, just have to unscrew that a little bit. Battery's disconnected. When you want to take it for a drive, a couple spins, battery's connected again. Well, that's it for today. I definitely got dirty today. 
that was quite a job to replace all those motor mounts and the transmission mount. If you want to see more Triumph or Triumph TR7 videos, comment below and click subscribe. Oh, my God.